This is Twit. Uh, the updates we've heard about that Apple had touted are now out for Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro, both for the iMac and the subscription version on the iPad. I would thought you guys would probably want to talk about this. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yeah, they had a big get together. So Apple had a had the the summit, the FCP summit, yes, uh, last week, and usually that's when they're going to release something. Yeah. Um, not a lot of changes in uh, motion. I think they just had some basic stability updates. Uh, compressor has some more support for spatial video, um, and then. Final Cut, um, the big jump obviously was Final Cut as far as the uh, updates to the to the video products. Um, they have a new smart masking, an uh, AI. Well, I think they're calling it AI masking, but it's a you know smart masking that's that's um, very detailed. Um, and then also transcription, you know, so, and that's something that's almost table stakes at this point. If you have an editing package, you kind of have to have it be able to do that. One thing that's interesting is you're starting to see a divergent from, you know, Final Cut was on on the iPad, and we've seen this with Keynote as well, they're starting to add features to the iPad version that doesn't exist in the Mac version. Oh, so, interesting. So some of the draw-on stuff that, that they have, you can just grab your iPad and, oh, I want to draw something that, that'll, be, that'll get painted out during, you know, for the, for the show. That kind of thing is easy to do on an iPad, um, harder to do on a Mac, uh, you know, with a pen. So, um, so that's the kind of thing that, that they're starting to kind of move towards um, in that area. So um, that's, that's kind, of, uh, kind of interesting, but um, pretty, you know, and then a lot of new spatial tools. So the ability to view your spatial work, uh, be able to convert spatial work, uh, be able to, one thing that's interesting is like, <laughs> we're getting to this point where Resolve and Final Cut feel very complementary in the sense that, Resolve has some tools that Final Cut doesn't. So Resolve has some stereo tools that are really cool. Final Cut um, has better viewing viewability than Resolve. I mean, some of these, they might catch up with each other over time. But um, it was interesting interesting to see both of them kind of going towards the same thing, but not in the same way. Um, uh, it does look like it's kind of interesting. You'll be able to view even with an anaglyph, you know, so just the red blue glasses, you'll be able to view stereo in Final Cut, you know, it has a way for you to kind of play that back. So they are, and this is a, the reason I bring this up is that it's a big reason that Apple has Final Cut at this moment. I mean, they, there's a lot of other reasons to do it, but, but I think that one of the big reasons that you, we, none of us think that Final Cut or Motion or Compressor are going away anytime soon uh, people worry about that sometimes um, is because Apple needs to have control of that pipeline if they ever want to do anything with spatial, you know, like they have to be able to develop their own tools for that. So, um, so you'll pro we'll probably see more tools in that area. So those are some of the big, the big updates for it. Um, I logic had some new um, preview and, you know, you can, you know, preview some stuff. I, 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 Peter Gabriel was really excited about the built-in Quantech Room Simulator plugin. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so I, I think I think it's mostly that I have a very low opinion of of room simulators. Uh, yeah. So what what these do, and so I I think that when I saw it, I was like, really? That's what we got? Like that was that was the <laughs> like that's that's all that's the best you got as a it room. It was system? hardware, right? In the eighties, uh, that in fact, uh, Peter Gabriel used a great effect. It was part of his famous sound right i think the yeah. drums and so forth but um now it's you cool i mean comes you know logic. you know there there's a lot of stuff a lot of the stuff there's a lot of it been a lot of room simulators there's also there's preview simulators on you know and i find i find that a lot of them just don't ever I, I could be wrong i use logic i haven't had time to really dig into it to play with it so i, I don't want to i don't want to say any more until is I it get like to play reverb with it, and echo or it yeah, shapes I, the sound a little bit? It or? can. It can. There's two different yeah. types. There's simulators, which are going to let you listen to it as if it was in a room so that you can mm. simulate a larger room while you're working on it. And then there is the actual simulating what this sound would sound like in a room. And that can be done. It, it's done in a lot of different ways. One way is an impulse where they make a loud, you know, they oftentimes pop a balloon. <laughs> You know, and it, and, it, and what it does is it tells you what that reverb's like, um, but mostly they do sweeps. So you sweep from the lowest tones to the highest tones, and you're listening to things. And and, th and that that kind of sampling can get a lot more complicated. Um, you know, it's a, or a mixture of those two things to capture how long that reflection lasts. And because the, the the issue is the reflections. The reason the sweep is important is that the reflection lasts longer in some uh, frequencies than others, depending on the space, you know? And so to really model the space, you have to, you have to hear what's happening at many, many frequencies um, to, to understand that. So, so anyway, those are some of the, the simulators. Again, I, uh, I don't know a lot of people that 
use them heavily, except for Peter Gabriel. <laughs> so, so, so I mean, I'm sure there's other the others that do. Well, and he used it in the '80s. So I mean, yeah. So I think that the the um, but I could be wrong. I mean, I'm probably going to get a bunch of, I you know, a, a bunch of people pinging me going, Here's I use it all the, the time, yeah. and I'm I mix for film and everything else. So you know, and and I think you can use it as to build something up. You're not going to really try to match something that you have there, but you may try to build use it as part of your build. So. Yeah, John Voorhees at uh, Max Stories had a Peter Gabriel quote, uh, which probably was published by Apple. In the, yeah, it's in the newsroom post. It's in the news report. The Quantec Room Simulator has been a key element to my sound for many years, appearing on records like Passion and Us. I also used it to build harmonic drones to start my live set, which then evolved into songs like Across the River. It's wonderful that Apple's bringing the Quantec QRS back to life. <laughs> well, I mean, that gives I, you a hint. So what I, what I what I get from this is that there's vintage equipment that people like the sound yeah, of. I mean, shocker, exactly. there's vintage equipment that musicians like yeah. the sound of, and it's not available anymore as hardware. So somebody actually spent some money to make it something that they can now just use as a plug-in in on their computer, and that's you know that's great. It's it's the people who love it will love it, and I kind of love the idea that this thing that used to be this presumably expensive piece of hardware, it's just, it's just a logic plug-in now. That's nice. That's nice. You can get that gaseous cloud effect of like red rain now if you want it <laughs> red rain greg scott in our youtube says that is not what peter gabriel sounds like it is at not all. at all he was sort of became one of the beatles there at the end but it's fine <laughs> i don't know i i he comes it's from fine. salisbury hill that's it's, all it's, i know he's, he's, i don't even know what lives that down is. in bath now and uh but it's <laughs> it's that was that was a sound there in the 80s as a child of the 80s that was definitely uh, there were a lot of people who oh, yeah. wanted that peter gabriel daniel lanois gaseous cloud effect they called it sound and you hear it in various degrees and so and oh, in the joshua tree and in robbie robertson solo oh. album and like it is a sound oh, cool. of that era especially yeah okay it's yeah but that's the thing it's like 8-bit uh video games it's a it's a nostalgia play. yeah although there's a lot i mean if you listen to a lot of uh contemporary alt rock it's all 80s and 90s sounds now like yeah, the, the 80s sure. and 90s came back and there are bands that want to be very 80s and like i'm sure do i think the 1975 will use this plug-in uh, at some point yes i do because they have a lot of songs that are and, aggressively and, 80s and, retro sounding and, and a lot of times that. an artist has a set it's not that it simulates a certain room, but it gives them a certain, it's a warmth or a sound that they yeah. like. And so it's more of an instrument. It's called a room simulator, but it's really just another instrument or a way to, to, uh, okay. to edge their it instrument one way. The sound. It's yeah. just shaping it, it, it. And so he happens to like the way that that one sounds. Yeah. It may even be a literally one setting on the room simulator, yeah. right? Right. <laughs> exactly. And he's like, no, no, we don't touch the, <laughs> probably... we don't touch the knobs now. This is how it, it just gets used like that. And now he can save that as a preset. It's great. I yeah. have uh, turned on my deep cave room simulator does that improve the overall sound of the show makes yeah, see, it sound spend, like you're in a cave all i can tell I mean, you is that we spend done. so much time we spend so producers much time producers are to get crying rid of that now sound. the producers <laughs> are crying I, I i you know we there's a lot of work that i do to get rid of that sound from the from the thing so that's part of why i don't like to. Today, today, today i consider, I consider myself, 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 myself. Sorry, yeah I won't